I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. I was talking to a, another guy here at the range, and um, he was thinking the same thing I was about this gun, and uh, we were saying that how much it looks like it's a German gun. And even he was saying with the sights back here that it looks kind of like a Luger almost. And uh, now this, uh, this gun, you know, uh, didn't see a lot of combat. Uh, but today, at the time this video is being made, this is quite a collector's item. And what we have here is a Armorlite uh, 180. And um, this is a semi-automatic version of the uh, other one, um, the uh, Armorlite 18, um, which is uh, select fire. But this gun is not select fire, so this would be a 180. Now, um, so the history um, is quite fascinating with this gun. And uh, what Armorlite was doing was trying to manufacture something that somebody that maybe couldn't afford the AR-15 could actually come down and, and uh, afford the 18 or the 180. Um, and, you know, it failed uh, two times with the U.S. military trials. And uh, now, after the first trial, um, the U.S. military sent back the information um, that it failed at. So Armalite fixed those and then sent them another one, but that one failed too. Um, but anyway, um, it's known as the most successful failure as far as firearm concerned because um, it's going on to um, the, the operating system has been um, employed in a lot of the new modern guns of today, uh, which, which some of this operating system is a short stroke piston. And now that's going on to show up in the FN SCAR firearm. Um, the G36 by H and K. And then we have the uh, Sig Sawyer um, MCX that it shows up in. And also the CZ Bren 2. So those are the four that I know of that it uh, shows up in. So um, this gun is manufactured out of uh, stamped sheet metal um, to bring down the cost. And another thing that uh, amazes me with this gun is it doesn't have a manual bolt catch. It has an ambidextrous uh, safety on it, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, so on this 180 you have safe and then you have fire. So those are the only two positions that you have here, but at least it's on both sides. So if you're a right-hander or left-hander, you, you've got that uh, advantage there. So, um, but it, it did come with one magazine when I bought it. And uh, now this is mostly just a collector's item for me. I don't shoot a lot. You know, it's a, it's a conversation piece. Um, you know, uh, like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't used in a lot of combat. The only combat that it was used employed in was the uh, with the IRA in Northern Ireland um, so they uh, they like these guns and uh, they actually had a song uh, titled the little armor light so and also if if uh, you were there you'd probably see some banners or flags with with a picture of this gun on it but um, armor light also sold it to parts of Africa too so um, it wasn't a complete failure as far as being able for the sales, and there weren't that many of them made. A little over 20,000 was made. And this one was made by Sterling in England, and it was manufactured somewhere between 1976 and the mid-1980s. In the mid-1980s, that's when they stopped production of these firearms, but uh, um, Armor Light did make a few of them, um, you know, a few thousand of them between 1969 and 1972. And then they contracted the gun out to uh, Hawa in Japan to make around, I think they made around 3,000, give or take. 
and that was between 1972 and 1974. And then after that it went to Sterling and then they produced them. And I'm pretty sure that Sterling um, are the ones that uh, manufactured and those were the ones that ended up with the IRA. And, um, but supposedly they only shipped over there uh, or smuggled over there at the time, the 180s. Um, I kind of find it hard to believe that all of them were 180s. I'm kind of thinking there might have been an 18 here and there um, that they had also. So I'm not positive on that. I'm not a historian. So, um, but I would assume that there was a few 18s that, that, were all, that also got through. Um, so anyway, um, we're going to shoot this today. At, uh, we're going to start out, get it on paper at 25 yards and um, and then we'll we'll move out to 50 yards. This this gun is made for close in combat fighting, so um, it's not really meant for um, long range firing or anything. But the stock does fold down. Uh, it folds over, and there's a catch for it over here that holds it holds it back. And uh, now, you know, being that this is a sheet metal uh, production, you know, it's like this hinge is you know, the weld on it, you know, you might find better welds with different manufacturers, you know, like either Costa Mesa or um, uh, Hawa of Japan. I think Sterling did an excellent job building this rifle. Um, they're the ones that manufactured most of them, so um, I don't see where there would be really an issue, um, you know, since it failed with the military and the U.S. military a few times. I'm sure they're not perfect. and. Um, parts may be hard to find and at the time this video is being made I think they're probably a little easier to find nowadays than they were say a few years ago but um, I'm sure you can you can find parts somewhere for them but they're not really meant to shoot quite a bit um, they're really meant to hang on your wall and, and uh, show your friends and family and and just enjoy you know um, the history of the gun and that's what it's all about. So the only time that I would shoot it would be to share with you. What we're gonna do is uh, we just probably just load up three at a time and, and uh, I have a portable target that I constructed. So I'm right here at the 50 yard range and uh, I'll be moving it starting at 25 and then we'll go to, we'll go to probably out to 50 with it and see how we do. And, and uh, I assume it's probably pretty close to good enough to shoot at 25 yards. But anyway, I appreciate you joining me. And so let's get started. So the target, like I said, is 25 yards away. And uh, now all I really want to hit, I'm not really concerned about, not really concerned about shooting in the bullseye with this since it's iron sights, but uh, I'd like to get it in the black if I could so we'll see I'm gonna put the bullseye right on top of the front sight there and see what happens here with that all right so we're ready to go here the armor light 180 doesn't have much of a recoil that's for sure we'll fire three and then I'll go look in the spotting scope and see where we're at here okay Let's go ahead and turn it on safe mode. Now go down and check the... All right, this little armor light, very impressive. So I've never made any adjustments to this rifle, so, but you can see I put two right in there. And uh, like I said, all I was doing was uh, putting the bullseye right on top of the putting the bullseye right on top of the uh, front sight. That's all I did. Well, let's fire Let's fire the rest of the five we have in here. And we'll turn it off a safe. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
I would say the trigger pull is probably around five, pull, five pounds, six pounds. It's not light for, by any means, but I like the feel of the trigger. Here we go. Yeah, that's it. And as you can see, the bolt stays open on the last shot. Yeah, we'll see how we did here. Okay. I'm shooting a little left and just, I wouldn't say it was high. Uh, the elevation is fine. I just shot like three of them slightly to the left, it looks like. Um, so what we'll do next is we will set up the target at 50 yards and um, see how we do at 50. But we don't have much of a wind here today at all. So I would say it's probably about three, four miles an hour wind. But uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and set up the target for 50 yards. Okay, let's see what the little armor light can do at 50 yards here. Uh, now I don't know if I mentioned before, but it has a 20 inch barrel. Uh, it is a 5.56, five, but you can shoot 223 out of it if you prefer. Now we're since we got iron sights, um, I'm going to lay that bullseye right on top of my front sight again, just like I did at 25 yards. And you know it was shooting pretty good at 25 yards, so I didn't make any adjustments to the iron sights at all. But uh, <clears throat> so what we'll do, let's uh, get some uh, 5.56 five, over here. Okay. And you know, it's always a good idea to check your ammunition box and make sure it's 5.56. Five, five, so we're at feet per second, we're at 3120. Yeah, 55 grain, full metal jacket. Okay, I like PMC. It's readily available, it shoots nice groups. Um, and it's, it's reasonably priced. Let's go with uh, five. Let's, yeah, let's just throw five down there. Well, I'm expecting a bullet rise, of course, at uh, 50 yards. This uh, original magazine Nice. Loads very easy. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to go on that top target. See how we do. I'm going to aim, I'm going to assume there's going to be a bullet rise, so I'm going to aim at the white line or aim just below the bullseye. All right. So make sure it's on safe. Okay. We just don't want to hit the GoPro. Coming off a of safe. Finger outside the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. Top target. Here we go. But safe. Okay, we're about an inch lower than the bullseye now. See what happens. Taking it off a safe.
There we go. Put it back on safe. So that shot just a little high and to the right a little bit, but it was better than the first shot we took. So we've got three more in here to sh shoot. So at least we're, we know where we're sh where it's shooting at 50 yards. Okay, so I'm going to go down just almost to the edge of the black circle of that top target. I'm going to take it out of safe mode. Fingers outside the trigger guard until I'm ready to fire. Here we are. Okay, here we go. Back in the safe mode. Okay, see how you have you have to experiment around that shot low and to the left. Okay. So we gotta come up a little bit. All right, coming out of safe mode. Here we go. I'm not going quite as low now. One left. Back on the safe. Okay, so I don't think we're gonna get much better than that. That was just half an inch above the bullseye. So, um, now what part of the target was I aiming at? Um, you know, without a scope or a red dot, it's really hard to tell because with these iron sights, that's, that's a tough shot with iron sights, but I'm gonna try it again with the last one. It's coming out of safe mode, okay? Okay, I think this is where I was. Kind of like two inches below the bullseye, but I'm centered. Here we go. Okay, that was it. We can put our safety flag in. Take our magazine out okay and put it back in a safe mode okay okay that one was low to the left and about two inches from the bullseye but Hey, that's really good accuracy at 50 yards for the little armor. You know, and we, we didn't make any adjustments at all with the, with the iron sights today, and I think that's, a, that's really great. Um, but I think this was a successful video for sure with the Armor Light 180. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and really um, take the time to leave me a comment down below and tell me something about the armor light, you know, the history maybe or whatever, maybe you have one. Anyway, hit that subscribe button for me, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>